The three-pointed star has always held great allure and owning a Mercedes-Benz has been a goal for many. The entry to the brand in India was the A or the B class and then until last year it was the super stylish four-door coupe, the CLA. However, the CLA's stylish look and its swooping roof did cramp the back seat and it was too low to the ground to be practical in our conditions. Well, the new entry point to the brand is now going to be the A class limousine. promises to be a much more practical sedan while offering the luxury that's expected with a Mercedes. Now, this is called the A-Class Limousine, but it doesn't have the stretched wheelbase that its bigger siblings, the E or the S, has. It is in the long wheelbase version that you see in China. It is the standard version that you see in Europe. But this is to differentiate it from the earlier A-Class that was a hatchback. This is a full-on sedan. And Mercedes are telling us that it is the biggest in its segment. So let's take a look at that, shall we? There are really only two other cars to compare it with, and they are the BMW 2 GC and the Audi's A3. While the A3 is not currently here, it is expected. So let's take a look at how they match up on size. Well, it is the longest, it is the tallest, and it does have the longest wheelbase. How much space does that open up on the inside? Let's take a look. Okay, so definitely more space here than there was in the CLA. And what I like is the way that this front seat is, you know, it's sort of scooped out quite flat and nice, so it opens out a lot of leg room. I mean, I'm not uh, very tall, I'm five feet three inches, but as you can see, there's ample room for someone who's very tall here at the back. The good part is you can actually stretch your feet out under the seat as well. You do sit a little low, it is a bit knees up, but uh, there's a very large window area so you don't feel like the window line is too high and of course that panoramic sunroof also really opens it out. With the roofline having a gentler slope to the rear, it has also opened up way more headroom for taller people in the back seat. And while we feel that this new look may have taken a little away from the styling, Mercedes-Benz have worked hard to ensure that it maintains its slippery nature and it still has an award-winning 0.22 drag coefficient so that it has good efficiency and performance. Back on the inside, the seats themselves are comfy and you could squeeze a smaller third passenger in, but the central tunnel does divide the leg space. There are rear AC vents, but no individual airflow or temperature control. And there are two USB-C ports for the rear passengers. The boot is a far more practically shaped space and it offers 405 litres on the petrol and 395 litres on the diesel. That can be opened up for more space with the rear seats flipping down in a 60-40 split. Now, while the version we're shooting is a test model, the version sold will have the spare wheel under the boot floor. So while we're inside this cabin, let's take a look at the interiors. It is a smart and stylish space. The dash has a large ledge wrapped in leather that runs right across, topped by open pour wood that looks just so rich. The familiar rotary vents sit in the centre and on the sides and are surrounded by chrome and they also uniquely get lit when the ambient lighting is on. We did manage to shoot it with the lighting and the interior does look quite awesome. There are a staggering 64 colour options to suit your mood. There is also the super smart single panel instrument and media display which has the 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster and a 10.25 inch touchscreen. This comes with the latest Mercedes MBUX system that has a host of functions. They can be accessed either by voice, the touchpad or the steering mounted controls. So I've hopped in front to use the infotainment system. The MBUX system is really advanced. First, let's check out the voice response system. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Can you turn the temperature low? I'm setting the temperature on the driver's side to minimum. It's as easy as that. And there's a host of functions that you can ask Hey Mercedes to access for you. A unique feature is the link to What Three Words to identify a location. What Three Words is a unique system that allocates three words to make it easier to navigate to destinations. 
it's handy for difficult names and long addresses. But otherwise, this also has the Mercedes and Me app. You can connect your car and you can access a whole load of details about your car while sitting in the comfort of your home. And now you can even use Alexa or Google Home to actually do some functions on your car like lock and unlock it and cool it down, etc. Now, if you want the details of the MBUX and the Mercedes and Me app, there is another video on our website that gives you all the little functions that it can do. The link is on your screen right now. You also get wireless charging, something that I think is a must these days, and the cabin does have enough storage spaces around. Okay, so we know it's loaded with tech. Now, before I kick off the drive, let's jump into the feature list for the A-Class. The point to note here is that each engine will only have one fully loaded variant available. So yes, you will get it all. We saw the 35 AMG at the Auto Expo, which was to be launched last year, followed by the standard variants. But with everything delayed due to the pandemic, all three engine options will now be available at launch. The A-Class will come with the A200 with a new 1.3-litre 163HP petrol and the A200D with a familiar 2-litre diesel with 150HP. The 35 AMG will have the fire-breathing 2-litre with 306HP and it will be the second AMG to be localised in India. What we had on hand to drive first was the petrol since it is the new entrant. The engine feels creamy smooth to start off with and honestly it just doesn't feel like a 1.3 litre at all. In fact, it feels quite strong, it gets up to speed really easily. You do have to prod the pedal with a heavier foot to bring up the power. And there is a little bit of lag that gets exposed in comfort mode when the gearbox is responding in a leisurely manner. But honestly, all you have to do to get around that is flip it into sport, and that really spices things up. It feels more energetic all around. And it even blips the throttle quite sportily when it's downshifting. While the gearbox is generally smooth and shifts fast enough, when you want a sudden burst of power, it does wait on you a bit. And then a quick dab on the paddles is what's needed. The mid-range is the engine's strength and as you get to the top end, the power delivery does taper off. So overtakes do require you to smash down on the pedal. When you do that, the engine gets boomy as it hits the top part of the rev band. The steering is quite light and easy, especially, you know, like if you're in the city or making U-turns, turning around. And then it does weigh up quite well at higher speeds too. It's not exactly sporty, but then if that's what you want, you always have the 35 AMG. Overall, the demeanor of the car, whether you talk of handling or performance, is not sporty, but more about arriving at a destination ferried in comfort and luxury. And that's where it excels. Now that it's a spacious back seat, I had to get back here to see how the ride quality is. What comes as a pleasant surprise, and I say pleasant surprise because the ride quality actually feels plusher than some of its bigger siblings. It kind of rounds off the bumps and potholes and imperfections in the roads at low speeds really well and at higher speeds it stays flat and composed so it is a very plush ride quality in fact i think the a class has an a class ride they've aced it while the ride quality is impressive what takes a little away from the luxury experience is a lot of road noise that filters through to the cabin with a three-pointed star on the bonnet a better level of insulation is expected 
Okay, so now that I am in a great location, let's take a good look at the A class. It does look quite elegant in this grey in the beautiful setting at the W Goa and it still has the slinky silhouette but the roof line is less curved than the CLA. The nose wears the single slat grille with the large three-pointed star and the swept back headlamps flank either side. The bonnet is large and flat with squared off lines and the side profile has the Merc DNA which is clean but sleek with a smart set of 17-inch alloys. The rear has almost triangular tail lamps with a fake dual exhaust to give it a sportier look. Sporty maybe not, but it is elegant and classy. The AMG on the other hand is for those who want bold and aggressive. Now, before I sum it up, let's head to Gavin, who has been driving the diesel. Now, my time with the diesel A-Class limousine is very brief, so I'll keep things short. This is the A200D and it uses the same 2-litre OM654 diesel engine as we've seen in the C-Class, the GLC and the like. But of course, it's the 200D, so it's in a lower state of tune. In this car, it makes 150 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque, which you'll agree is still quite substantial. And all that power and torque goes to the front wheels through a new 8-speed DCT dual-clutch automatic gearbox. The result of all this is that the car goes from 0 to 100 in a claimed 8.2 seconds, which incidentally is 0.1 second quicker than the petrol version. Another headline figure is that the company claims this car will do a class-leading 21.35 kpl on the ARAI cycle. First impressions, well, they are really, really good. It starts with refinement and this engine is really, really hushed for a diesel. In fact, I'd go as far as saying overall this car is more refined than the petrol. And that's kind of because it feels a lot more effortless than the petrol engine and doesn't have to be worked so hard. So overall, it does end up sounding quieter more of the time. Now, yes, it certainly does feel effortless with 320 Newton meters on tap from very, very low down. And you rarely feel the need to extend this diesel engine to its very limit, which is just as well because while it is quite refined at low revs, it can get quite noisy when you stretch it out. If you floor it in a low gear, you'll be met by a strong burst of acceleration, but also quite a bit of torque steer. Other things that differ from the petrol version are that the steering feels a little bit heavier and the suspension feels a little bit firmer, likely to account for the added weight over the front wheels of the diesel engine. Now, I personally prefer the slightly weightier steering in this A-Class, but some might prefer the lighter steering of the petrol version. But what you do definitely notice is that the ride that's firmer can be felt a lot more inside the cabin. Bear in mind, however, that despite the fact that it's firmer than the petrol, it's far from what you'd call uncomfortable. This raised suspension means, despite its long wheelbase, the A-Class is able to clear most speed breakers without an issue. Overall, in fact, provided the price is not too much higher than the petrol, we'd say the diesel is our pick of the two. And well, that was a very quick and brief first impression of the diesel A-Class. And now, it's back to Renuka. Well, it is a step up from the CLA. It has a more spacious back seat. It has a more practical boot. And it doesn't bottom out over the speed breakers like the earlier CLA did. So it's a far more practical sedan, but that's not it. If you're looking to step into the brand of the three-pointed star, this is a great place to start because it offers everything that it stands for. Luxury, refinement, good performance. And now that they're offering only one fully loaded variant, you will also get it well equipped and full of tech. This may be the smallest Merc here, but it is big on luxury.